Welcome back to Imperium Galactica. By now you may be wondering, just how long does Dante have left as a captain? Well, not that long, but there are some more tasks he needs to perform here. It is September 23rd, a few hours after our battle defending Admiral Benson, and it's a good point in time to take a look at review of some of the economic concerns that we talked about in the last episode. So, first of all, obviously, is continuing with the basic needs so that we have a happy and growing tax base. Centronome needs food. And we've already started a nuclear plant right after the battle, but we're also going to need, of course, the hydroponic farm. And we will throw this down here. So power will be up in time for that. That's all good. Now we need to go into production. Again, keep the lasers pumping. Build up to three and a half a day at the factory. So get a fourth one in there and we'll be good. We are going to have a spaceship factory come online. And we're going to be building destroyers there. Of course, we want to build five more destroyers and finish loading out the ships that we have now for the fleet that I'm going to want at this particular time. So 12,000 expense and then equipment, shields. We're going to want two of these as we're going to have two equipment factories coming up. So that's a total of 20,000 that we're going to be spending that we really can't use to improve our plant. So we really only have 43,000 right now to utilize. It's important to keep that priority in mind. And also the light shield actually takes longer than the destroyer that it goes on to build. A little strange, but it's important to remember those balances when you're thinking about, okay, how many factories am I gonna build? So getting back to that, San Sterling has the one equipment factory coming up, but not the other two. It's the only place we can build more factories right now because of power. So we are going to throw up a spaceship factory here next. And we'll just throw that up somewhere around in this corner. And I think that, yeah, that's going to be a very nice place for it. Now, that's about all we can do here, because we don't have enough power to fuel the equipment factory and the spaceship factory and the weapons factory at full. So they would all have reduced capacity if we went ahead with the next one. I'd like to get another power plant, but that's going to be 24000 and, you know, we don't quite have that much, and then still invest in all of the additional production that we need. A couple days later, September 25th, and by the way, notice the Garthog fleet moving around here. You noticed that in the last video if you're particularly sharp-eyed. But this is going to go back and forth between these planets and also between some of these off-screen. And this is really the game's first overt hint that the rest of the galaxy is still moving and developing and doing things, even while we still have work to do here. Now, Progress has continued on Sands Sterling. We have Weapons Factory coming up. We have Spaceship Factory in place. We have our new power plant to make sure all that's going. And we have moved on to beginning to work on getting some developments up on Naxos. Now, depending on how much we get out of this fusion plant, might be able to take down the nuclear one here, might not. All depends on that random generation issue that we talked about. But then we're also going to want to move on with equipment factories. However, before we do that, we've again got to pay attention to our spending. And we have one destroyer here that's been built, one almost finished. And since we've got two spaceship factories, we're going to finish this one, do a second one, and actually just start a third. So we've got to spend then 24000 queuing up these additional destroyers. And then oh, we're going to have to queue up another shield here. And we're going to get a second weapons factory up here soon, so we're going to need to move this all the way up to 7. So we had 70,000, and now we have 38,000. And so the more, obviously, factory production that you're working on, the less money you're actually leaving yourself to invest. So it can get a little bit dicey there. But we should still have enough to throw up the equipment factory, although that's all we're going to be able to do. Because once we put this down... We're back under 20000 and all we can do is wait for more money to come in. Time now for our next mission to appear. Commander, we have received a message. And armed transport will be in need of assistance as it passes your sector. Be warned, a lot of people are after the cargo. Let me remind you, this ship's cargo must reach its destination. Do not fail me. Interesting they have the Colonel 
you know, more in the background there, farther away from the camera. But we have another transport escort. We haven't done one of those in a while, though we just did escort the Admiral a bit ago. So, before we get to that, we've got some more money to spend now on the next day. And we have actually almost completed our buildup in terms of the fleet. We have one more destroyer that's already been paid for and queued up, and a shield here that's getting close to being done for that, and all of the lasers are finished. So we don't need any more factories. What are we going to spend our money on now? Well, I have already started boosting up the power, built some more power plants on Achilles. And we need to look forward a little bit here. I've got to get a little spoilery. Because I'm beginning to overtly prep for the next rank. And I talked a little bit before about the accidents you can get, not with, you know, the fusion plants like these, but with nuclear plants. And we can't get rid of the nuclear plants because we don't have anything better, anything different than we could even use on Centronome and on Achilles. So I do want to put up another power plant here. But also to prevent accidents from happening, I need fire brigades. So I'm going to get a couple of those going. Let's move down a bit. Get this in place. And the way an accident works is, you're not warned about it at all. It just happens. Your power plant will go down to about between 85 and 90% damage. So almost completely damaged, but not destroyed. Then you'll have to repair it, which will take you know considerable time and some money. And you're waiting for everything to be dealt with. And th this will just continue to happen from time to time. Now, there's nothing the game says to tell you this is going to happen. Like, if you look at the descriptions for, like, the nuclear power plant and the fusion plant, they say nothing about the fusion plant being safer or that the nuclear plant is vulnerable to accidents. It's a mechanic that just occurs, but you have no way to know what's coming. So we're going to go ahead and throw down a fire brigade here as well. On Achilles. And then we're going to be ready for all of that. We will not need to be worrying about that actually happening when we get there. Next up is development centers. Now they are all the same size and the way this works is you see we still have the one computer dev center, the one AI dev center. They aren't activated right now but they are built. These you can only have one development center per planet and we have five planets and there are five different types we do want one of each type going forward. So I'll just build a civil engineering one here on Achilles, which of course had a military one, I believe it was, at the start of the game. We're just going to throw this up here. They're all 6 by 7 the same footprint as a hospital is. And I think that's about all we really want to do for now. I'd like to build more development centers, obviously. We're going to need two more. But at the moment, you know, we see 34,000, 2,000 energy, and then, of course, the military one is the big one, 52,000, 3,000 energy. You can see the, the cost here in escalating. But you know, there's a nice chunk of change to put those in place. Let's just make sure everything is good with our taxes. And it is. So we will continue on forward. That's a big transport. We can't see it because it's just off in this area, but it'll be coming into view soon. And at this point, I'm just waiting also for our final bits to get finished on the shield and the destroyer that we need. And then we'll equip our fleet. There we go. It's letting us know light shield's ready. Produced. And there's our destroyer. Okay, so now we can get everything set up here. Let's go ahead and turn on that 
spaceport. And now that we've got another power plant up, we can actually turn that on. And everything is looking good here. I think we got a good roll on that one. Let's see, how much do we get? Pretty good. Over 6,000 for a nuclear reactor. That's uh, that's nice. We've got really good ones on sand sterling. If we look at that, over 40,000. Like One of those was almost 25,000 for a fusion plant, which is near the limit. And meanwhile, over here on Naxos, well, our luck has not been so hot. 13,000 for each of these. That's kind of a yuck. Let's take a look, by the way, at the actual factory buildings, what they look like. So there's the equipment factory. Quite a bit of brown in there. That's a little more colorful. The spaceship factory is kind of drab. And then same thing for the weapons factory. But that's the three of those. So now let's get all of this fleet sorted. So we're going to... We still have some damage here. We're just going to add on the lasers. So we're going to max that out on all of our existing ships. Then the new ones get names as well. But we don't get to choose those. We just head over here to destroyers. And we're just going to add them all in. And you can have up to 30 fighters of each type in a fleet. You can have up to 25 of the standard you know, line class of warships, cruisers, destroyers. And then up to three flagships. And beyond that, you simply would have to build additional fleets. You can only cram so much into one fleet. So that'll be a thing going forward. But we have everything that we're going to need here. So we just need to make sure everybody gets their lasers and their shields. Meltdown, you can see it, like we have a second Excalibur here. We have Ivan. And then we have Destructor and Crusher. So, I think Meltdown's a bit of a strange name for a warship. But, you know, I'm sure the Empire knows better than I. So now with all of that in place, we are going to just come down into this area and escort our transport when it shows up. Shouldn't be too long till it comes back on the screen. There it is. It's actually going to be a couple days, so we'll just go over there and encounter it. But let's also take a look at what happens if you fail this mission. Message. Obviously, Dante, my trust in you has been misplaced. You simply don't have the makeup to succeed. I've lost track now of how many different ways and times Colonel Douglas has told us you're demoted, you're fired, game over in different situations. Been quite a few though. I saw someone sneak out of my room. I ran after them, but they got away. When I checked my stateroom, nothing was missing, but my workstation was active. Has someone been spying on me? Hmm. Somebody's spying on Dante? Now, if you watch really closely to that cutscene, you probably got a glimpse of who it was, and you may even be able to know already, if you're paying really close attention, who the culprit is. Well, this is definitely something Dante needs to investigate as his personal drama continues to unfold. Wouldn't you know it? We've got somebody waiting here to talk to us. Kelly. Hey, Kelly. What's the haps? Hey, good to see you. Nothing special. Everything's fine here as I can figure, except for the fact that uh, we're stuck in a war zone. Now, you know the dialogue was originally written for a different language and translated into English. Some things are lost. But is that really the best greeting you can come up with? What's the haps? About as lame as I've ever heard. Oh, so I take it you're not too keen on fighting. Yeah, of course not. Especially since there's nothing like uh, human about our enemies. The biggest problem is you can't predict their reactions. And you never know what they're thinking. But I'll tell you what I'm thinking. We've been at war with them for over 30 years, 
and we still don't know any. Well, a little more history about our conflict. I'm assuming this is referring to the Garthogs. But over 30 years? I get the feeling, you know, the Empire intelligence isn't super reliable these days. That doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? Come on, talk to me. Well, you know, their ships are just so fast. None of our cruisers can touch them, and their flight paths are uh, almost incalculable. When we do get a lock on them, they move so fast that it doesn't make any difference. Every time I see it, it still surprises me. How can we defeat something that's so much more advanced technologically? We know so little about them. Okay, listen up, Kelly. We went through the Academy together, so I, I think I can trust you, can't I? I think there might be an alien spy on my ship. Have you seen any strangers on board or anything? <laughs> Aliens, don't make me laugh. This ship isn't big enough to hide a rat, let alone an alien spy. You gotta be crazy just to ask. You know, paranoia is a side effect of Prosaic Brandy. <laughs> so, Kelly thinks that Dante is drunk. That's amusing. But also, said so they went to the Academy together? They don't appear to be the same age, and the way they're talking, I just I get the impression that Kelly's much older. So that's that's kind of bizarre. Hey, I haven't touched that stuff since college, but I could swear I saw someone running out of my room. I'm sure there's someone spying on me. No, I can't believe there's an alien on the ship. If you're worried about spying, stay at that pro brandy and turn on your room recorder. You know, you can record room movement on your computer. All you gotta do is put it in the rec position. Then, uh, leave the room, and the computer will automatically record the movements of anyone who enters that room. Pretty simple. Thanks for the tip, Kelly. So, we did actually get some information there at the very end. We have a way to track down this mystery. So, back to our stateroom. And this is the only purpose for this record message option, which is useless the rest of the game. If I set my computer to record... It should capture all activity in my room. Then I might catch the spy on the ship. All right, that's set up. Back to our escort mission. And now more money to spend as the transport gradually makes its way across the system. We actually have a housing issue to deal with at this point. On San Sterling, we are just starting to see the first effects of population growth decline and again quite a bit of spare housing but not enough for the people's satisfaction so let's make sure that we do not allow that situation to go any further I'm gonna throw up an arcology here and only a few hundred people behind is Naxos so we should really get that going and prevent it from having any impact at all on this planet and then we're going to need a development center. Let's throw up a mechanics one over here. Right next to the hospital. And there's one additional thing I want to do. Over on New Caroline, we... Whoops. We are tight on power. Just a little bit to spare. And we don't have the development center here operational yet. It's an AI one. So I need to get a fusion plant to give us enough power now to turn that on. There we are. And very little money left. We do still need one more development center, the big expensive military one on San Sterling, but we will get to that. There was a new message on the computer. The recording worked. Catherine the psychologist is the spy. But why? I must report them. Yes, indeed. Let's find out what the colonel has to say about all of this. Well, we have asked the psychologist to give you a routine examination. However, in no way did we give her an order to search your room. This is simply not true. I will settle this matter with her personally. Don't worry. All you have to do is keep up the good work. Okay. Well, we still don't know why our psychologist Reinhardt was spying on us. 
the colonel's being quite defensive there and also i think a little too dismissive we've got a medical officer spying on their superior and we're not going to replace them we're not going to have any sort of official reprimand or charge we're just going to sort of brush it under the rug it doesn't seem to me to be a very appropriate response And another day, more money. Let's get that final development center up. Then let's check on that housing situation. And indeed, we are back to the maximum. You know, up to 60,000. All of that is fine. Our needs are being met elsewhere almost up to maximum growth on New Caroline. We're not quite back up to that point, but everywhere else, things are totally humming along. So we are gonna have the battle here with the transport soon. And what I need to do is split off some ships. First of all, why do I wanna do this? Well, I don't want my damaged ships to take part in the battle. They will get targeted, prioritized by the enemy and they'll get damaged worse. And the ones that are damaged are you know, not quite repaired yet are our best ships with the most experienced crew. So that would be bad. So we want to split some of these off. But even that is easier said than done. I'm just going to split off one at a time. We'll see why here in a bit. Now notice, for example, this is... We want to end split first. There we go. This is the Excalibur. And this is damaged. So we want to split that one off. But watch what happens when we do it. We select the same ship again. Now we can't see the details on what it is. And then when we move it, there's another ship there. It relocates and, you know, remixes where all your ships are, the icons. The destroyer that was down here is not there anymore. So if you try to select one of these ships, it might not be the one that was in the same position before. So you kind of just have to do these one at a time. And now let's see what we have. Okay, yeah, we want to split off the cat killer as well. So now what we should have here is just our five new but undamaged destroyers. And indeed, that's what we have along with our fighters. So let's combine those other ships and send them away from the battle so they don't get involved. Also easier said than done. So let's say we're going to do join here bring those together and join then we'd want to hit join again right well, there's nothing here because when we selected this fleet it's trying it's still trying to join from the same fleet that doesn't exist and there's no way to you have to go out of the screen then go back in then you select it and now if you join we have the next fleet that was by it that we want to reform so that just it's quite fiddly i mean you can make it work it's just not the best interface ever designed of course it is a very old game but still things are what they are i'm just going to move you away from the fight for now so we'll only be using the ships that we want so here's what we're facing two destroyers four fighters and they want to go after the transport we have the advantage 215 to 120 in firepower so we should have enough force to do this but I do also of course want to minimize casualties and if you remember the message the colonel gave us the headline to that message was that we need to escort an armed transport it's not armed we've been sold a bill of goods again it has no weapons So I want to be very cautious here because of the missiles the destroyer has. I want to bunch up my fighters for defensive fire against it. But I don't want them too far forward because I like to avoid them getting blown up. I'm going to swing a couple destroyers out this way. And swing the rest up this way. Just let the transport hang out in front for now. And that's about as long as we can afford to have it do that. Because otherwise it's going to get blown up by the destroyer's missiles. 
And to that end, if the if the missiles hit the transport, you know, enough of them and it'll blow it up. If they hit my fighters, my fighters are gone. So the only thing I can really safely absorb them with is the destroyers. I want to send all of them after their enemy destroyer. The idea is to convince them that this fight is not worth their effort. Okay, see this one has already gone down quite a bit. And we're just going to run it away from the fight. This one's sort of gotten hung up here. But there we go. Now let's just mop up maybe some of these additional fighters that they have hanging about. And now they're running. Maybe we can get that one. Maybe we can't. We got it. And their destroyer's running. But main point is we survive the fight. And the only thing we got is damage to the one destroyer there. There we go. Knocked out three fighters and a destroyer. So, I will take that. Good work, Captain. Rest assured your superiors will be told of your wonderful skill. Outstanding. Now, next time we return to Dante's story in Imperium Galactica, we will get to the point where he's going to get promoted. But for now, that will have to wait. Thanks for watching.